All right, we're going to get started here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hello, welcome to the stream. My name is Milo. And today I'm playing a few games. Um, first of all, I'm going to show you Balloon Fight GB just because I have to switch emulators and stuff. Um, this is the sequel to Balloon Fight from NES and also Arcade. Uh, it's pretty cool. I'll be playing through it second, but first is something else. The only thing I wanted to show off uh, is the Super Game Boy border because the way I'll be playing it later won't have the border. Um, isn't it nice? Okay, there we go. So now we'll move over. <laughs> move over. It's uh, Yeah, it actually is really nice. Um, some games have support for multiple borders, but I don't know how to trigger um, the transition. Maybe I should just play it on this. Oh, man, I really should have thought about this better. Anyway, isn't that cool? <laughs> okay, so I'll explain about the history of these games, and it's pretty interesting. But we'll start off by just starting this up. And as you can hear, it's the same music. Oh, the volume's all different. Yeah. Oh no, that's actually not bad. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is Hello Kitty World, which, uh, as Mr. Mole will explain to us, uh, works a lot like the Balloon Fight games. Um, it, it's complicated. Anyway, um, <laughs> so yeah, this is a reskin, basically, of uh, Balloon Kid to start Hello Kitty. Or Kitty. Hello, is Hello Kitty part of her name? I'm not sure. It's a complicated world and lore to the Hello Kitty series. Um, I read recently that Kitty is not so... It's like the official statement is she's not a cat, she's just a little girl. But then why does she look like a cat? I'm really confused. Okay, so here's the plot. Uh, Tippy Bear just floated away on some balloons. Um, that's, that's it. Uh... Yeah, so you can play this in co-op mode if you have a second control in your Famicom, but uh, it's the same as the normal mode, just with a second player. And I don't have a second player, so hello, Mr. Mouse. We're going to play Hitori da, please. So, yeah. Yeah, so... Oops. Yeah. Ooh, ah, okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, so... Balloon Fight, obviously, was a game on the NES. Um, they did a sequel to it on the Game Boy called Balloon Kid, which was released only in the West, in North America and Europe. Uh, the original Game Boy only. Um, two years after that, uh, this game was made for the Famicom. It's an exact port, pretty much. Um, you know, some things were changed around. We'll be seeing all those differences as we play on, because I, if as long as these games are as short as I think, um, we should be able to play through both of them. The long play is about 40 minutes that I saw online, so <clears throat> hopefully in the time of my stream I can get through both games. Yeah. So that jingle you heard was me getting enough balloons. You pick up 20 of them, and then the rest of the balloons in the stage turn into double balloons, which surprisingly worth two and that strawberry panel is the entrance to a bonus room hello zach um and thank you i i do feel flattered jake kaufman is a great musician and if you're listening to me instead of shovel knight's music that um, speaks highly to uh me i guess no your dedication to me yes dedicate yourselves to me anyway so this is the bonus stage um uh, yes. So I think it's probably good to start with this one because in the transition between Balloon Kid and Hello Kitty World, they redrew a lot of the graphics and it ends up looking a lot simpler. So it could be considered something of a, an upgrade in a way, going from this to that, even though Balloon Kid came first. But the thing is, after this was out um, on the Famicom in 1992, uh, Japan actually did end up getting the Game Boy version after all. It was, it was just, uh, you know, 10 years later. Because they got um, 
a port of it to the Game Boy Color platform. Um, it was renamed to Balloon Fight GB and it wasn't commercially sold. It was only available through the Nintendo Power cartridge rewriting service, not to be confused with the Nintendo Power magazine from America. Yes, and you can drop your balloons at any time, as you can see, to fit through narrow passageways, or if you need to quickly change direction or something. Um. Oh, cool. Oh, I can ride the birds, I didn't even know that. I can even pump up my balloon while sitting on it. <clears throat> That's good, then my, my stream is working as intended, Zach. He says that um, he likes the streams because he likes Hello Kitty and Balloon Fight, but didn't even know that this existed. So yeah, that's cool. Um, I will try and explain about the history of them. All right, so that's the end of stage one. Yeah, Kitty, very cute. Yeah, very marketable. <laughs> I don't know, I'm a little cynical about the appeal of Hello Kitty because it's it's quite literally manufactured uh, to be a an appealing mascot. Um, but you know, that's basically Sanrio's business. Every, you know, regularly they come up with new characters uh, just as marketing exercises to be cute for people to like. Uh, and some of them catch on more than others, so... Um, I think one of Kitty's friends is a bunny called, uh, I forget, whatever, doesn't matter. But there's a frog too. If you've played any, like, um, Sanrio crossover games, there's some, like, Hello Kitty kart racer or whatever, stuff like that. Um, they've got a bunch of different characters from the company. I don't know the frog's name. Frog has, has his own games, I think. What's, okay, so Gibbons brought up Agretsuko, which is apparently a show that's on Netflix. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Oops, yeah, so things can pop your balloon, but you do get two chances, and you can then blow up uh, an additional balloon. I don't think that was a feature in the original balloon fight. You sort of lose your balloons, and then you die, and then that's it. But, yeah, this game's pretty friendly, I guess. You can bounce off enemies as long as they don't directly hit your balloon. Um, and then even if they do, you get another chance, and then you can land on the ground and blow up another one. It's pretty cool. So, yeah, when... Yeah, that's the 20. Um, yeah, when uh, Balloon Kid was brought to Japan in this form, it's on a home system instead of on uh, the Game Boy, so of course that means that the screen is much bigger. Um, the sprites are about the same size, and you'll see that later. Like I said, I'll play through um, Balloon Kid itself after this, uh, and you'll see how the sprites have been changed. They're more detailed um, in that other game as opposed to this one. Um, and yeah, the the bigger screen. Um, it's always an auto scroller, but um, because of the size of the playing area on Game Boy. You don't. You also have vertical scrolling as you go up and down. Whereas in this one, the whole play area is on the screen at once, which I really appreciate. I mean, if only the graphics were the nice detailed ones that they are on the Game Boy for this, it would be the perfect version of the game. But you do lose something, I think, comparing the two. I mean, the other factor is um, that Balloon Fight as a sort of Nintendo universe, even though it's not incredibly well established and f developed. Um, yeah, so I died there, which means I lost the double balloon power-up thing. But I guess they only had to score anyway, but you do, I think you get extra lives at score cutoffs, so that is a factor. Um, oh crap, damn it. Hang on a sec. Thanks for telling me, Zach, I remember that was an issue last time. Um, yeah, I ha I've got OBS going and then I have to minimize it to, um, yeah, there we go, oops, I have to minimize it so that, um, 
uh, it doesn't get in the way, but then the emulator screen doesn't take priority and blah, blah, blah. It's really annoying. Okay, so that's fixed now, I think. Uh, this would be solved if I had a double screen setup, but yeah, I don't. Got a laptop on a stack of books and a shoebox. <clears throat> Um, so I've lost my train of thought. What is Gibbon saying? So, okay, Agretsuko is a red panda office lady in the Hello Kitty universe. Um, she loves heavy metal but hates her annoying co-workers and boss. <laughs> She's basically the Hello Kitty character for people my age in the workforce. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> oh, actually, I think I saw you reposting fa fan art of her the other day. Yeah, okay, so that's what that was. Yeah, wide appeal. So you've got Hello Kitty for the little girls and, well, anyone else who likes her, really. Um, and then you've got, uh, yeah, Agretzko. Agretzko. Uh, yes, my laptop has HDMI out. What's... This music's changed. Uh-oh, it's a boss. That's right. Every two levels you get a boss. And I think there's four bosses in total. Okay, what's the deal? What are you gonna do? Let's stop leaning around just so we have a bit more control. Yep. Agretzko is a portmanteau of aggressive Retsuko. Cool. That's funny. What's the deal here? I don't really know how to interact with enemies. Yeah, but it's also a matter of desk space, Zach. I could get an old 4 to 3 monitor. Um. <laughs> but. As long as I don't, like, forget to change focus, I think the setup works pretty well, as it is. What's going on? Oh, there we go. Okay, so you drop off the balloon and bounce on its head, and that's how you do damage. Okay, I got it. That's the other thing uh, you would have seen just there. Instead of pumping off a balloon again, if you let go of the balloons you have, um, they float away, and then you can grab them again before they leave. Pretty cool stuff. That's three hits. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> so yeah, it's an auto-scroller apart from the boss stages. Oh, really? I have to do that again? Okay, I'm gonna rewind then. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Nice music. Yeah, thanks for catching that. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Yes. Okay, so... Um, yeah. Hello Kitty. It's cool. Um, the second player is the other kitten that she's usually seen with. I think it's her sister, um, who is Mimi. So if I had a player two, I could use uh, Mimi as a co-op um, in the campaign. This particular version of the game doesn't have any sort of versus mode, so Balloon Fight, the original game, is known for... Aha, see, we, we get the flying enemies now. Interesting. Um, yeah, Balloon Fight is known for having its two modes, Balloon Fight and Balloon Trip. So this whole game, at least the, you know, the campaign mode, is kind of an expansion on the Balloon Trip mode with an auto-scrolling screen and you're traveling through uh, to make progress to the left, which, you know, is also an unusual thing. Uh, a lot of games scroll left to right, but this one goes right to left. Um, ooh, I've got a P and uh, an extra life. Cool stuff. 
So it's getting faster and I have given up on getting perfect scores from all the balloons. So that's cool. Difficulty scaling, good. And Kitty seems to own a lot of balloons. I do like the whale in the background too. Um, yes. So yeah, balloon fight is the multiplayer mode or, well, it can be multiplayer, but it's also like a single screen. It's, it's basically kind of a knockoff of Joust, which was a classic arcade game. It was sort of Nintendo's spin on it um, because it's got momentum physics and it's got, uh, you know, your opponents who are in a similar situation to you and oopsie. You know, to click that link, I have to change priority. <laughs> okay, given the link to cool picture of Agoretsko looking uh, normal out of photocopier, but inside she's raging and tearing things up. He says a typical short, uh, typical Agoretsko short is her in an office situation where her boss will pawn off all his paperwork on her and she'll be polite and say, oh yes, of course I can deal with that. And then you get her internal thoughts and she's decked out in kiss makeup and taking a chainsaw <laughs> to everything while she sings heavy metal about it. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. Yeah, so the, the bird man there is pretty similar to the enemies that were in the original balloon fight. Wow, okay, we're going inside a whale, that's unexpected. Nice chalkboard, this screen is not in the original. There's some, yeah, they, a lot of these transition things were added. Holy hell, wait, inside a whale's rib cage. That's intense. I think there's a bit of a problem with having balloons be the main collectibles here. Um, the idea is that the character who floated off, Tippy Bear in this case, um, in Balloon Kid, it's Alice's brother, Jim. Uh, yeah, he's leaving a trail of balloons behind for the hero to, um, you know, Kitty or Alice, in whichever case, to follow uh, in order to find him and rescue him because his balloons have gone out of control. But Alice or Kitty is also using the same balloons in the same colour to go after him and they're also a form of health for you and your propulsion. I just think it's a little confusing to have the, the exact same balloons serve two completely distinct gameplay functions. But anyway, that's just nitpicking. Oops. Oh, now what do I do? I ran in here to get an extra life and now I can't get out. Oops, yep. Yep, Jonah and the Whale. It's actually pretty common in video games, I guess. And not just the Pinocchio game. <clears throat> or indeed, the Bible Adventures game. I, I don't actually know if that has a Jonah level. It's got Moses and Noah. Good old unlicensed NES game from... Uh, what's it called? Oh, what is it called? It's got a really dumb name, but it's like, you know... Bible games. I guess the idea is you drop your balloons, you stand on the right platform, it drops you down, then you get the heart, and then you go up on the left. I didn't do that. Um, yeah. So we got a kind of spooky remix of the main theme in here. Wisdom Tree, that was it, thanks, Zach. So yeah, there's a whole ecosystem inside this whale. We got the little prawns jumping up. We've got flying fish, I think. I don't want to do the bonus level because it's like tedious and takes a while and doesn't actually result in progress. And I'm not in desperate need of lives. It's the same issue with Donkey Kong Country 1's bonus areas and animal body stages. Um... So this might not make sense until later, but I'll point out that 
the level geometry, which is made up of blocks, they all have little pictures on them depending on what stage you're in. Um, the first one was a flower, and then the mushroom, and then I think it was a plane, and now a whale. I might have forgotten one. But um, that aspect is missing in the original Balloon Kid version. You just have sort of more natural uh, blocks making up the terrain instead of uh, ones with icons on them. Uh, the animation's very cute. Oops. Oh, that's the boss music. I wonder if I can damage any other enemies by dropping on their heads from above. Hmm. Hello Kitty has so many games. Has Retsuko been in a game yet, Gibbon? <laughs> she might be pretty new, I don't know. So this is tricky. How am I gonna bop this guy? Was that a damage? That might have been. It's making a sound. Just gonna stay above it. Okay, I guess this is working. No, it did the same animation when I wasn't near it. Hmm. Let's try this. I mean, this. Nope. So you got to be careful about your momentum. That's the thing about all these, all the balloon fight games. In, in midair, you have to. Oops. <laughs> yep, that didn't work. <clears throat> you have to tap the. Um, I don't know what you call it, the flap button or whatever, in order to make any movement. Um, so if you press it, you go upwards. If you're holding direction, you'll move in that direction. But you have to press the button holding a different direction in order to move in that direction, if that makes sense. I don't know. If you've played Balloon Fight, it makes sense. <laughs> um, although, from what I read, it's pretty interesting. Um, but, you know, this is a very early Nintendo game. Okay, there we go. So I dropped the balloon, bounced on its head, grabbed the balloon again to escape, and did the damage. Yes, great. Okay, this is working. Let's get a second one. Safety. Um, yeah, so apparently uh, some of the balloon... Oopsie. Luckily I saved when you weren't looking. Ah, but you see my balloons popped on the bones up there. What I was hoping was I could land on the boss while it's sitting there. But I might have to be a bit lower down so the balloons don't pop straight away. When they hit the ceiling. Or I could do that. Didn't even need them that time. Okay. Boss 2 down. Um, yeah, so there's a legacy of balloon fight in other Nintendo games because supposedly some of the movement code was transferred over into Super Mario Brothers for use in water stages. So Mario's swimming controls in um, SMB1 are pretty similar to the Balloon Man's controls in Balloon Fighter. Balloon, balloon Fight? Balloon Fight, I think, is the name of the game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, and um, on that screen you can see uh, Kitty's mother and father written, uh, drawn in chalk on that blackboard. All right, so we're leaving the whale now. Goodbye, Mr. Whale, Mrs. Whale, whatever. And this time we have rain. What does the rain do? Probably makes us fall down. Yeah, I can't gain height as well when I'm under the rain, as expected. So yeah, I read some pretty interesting anecdotes about the development of Balloon Fine while researching for this. Um, I was gonna talk about the whole series which I will do as long as I feel like I've established well enough the legacy of Balloon Kid going into Hello Kitty World. Um, I talked about it earlier, but I, didn't, I don't know. It was a bit disjointed. Um, oh, I, I guess I didn't mention... Oh, this... Yeah, that's a thing. The, the sparks coming out of lining clouds. Um, sparks, of course, were very... Uh, big part of, um, yeah, balloon trip mode in the original balloon fight. 
as a hazard. And here we see them in that way again. Yes. Oopsie. Yep, that's instant death. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so what was I saying? Things. Balloon fight. Balloon kid. Ah, uh, of course, when you're near the water, a fish will jump out and eat you. That's, a, that's again, part of the, yeah, formula of the series, I guess. Oh, that's right. I didn't um, mention the developer. So, the... Well, okay, I'll talk about it this way. So, the original Balloon Fight was released on both NES and Arcade at about the same time, but the two of them were in development uh, simultaneously as well. And they were being made by two different companies, in fact. Um, so, HAL Laboratory, which was... Gosh, was it... Um, a Nintendo subsidiary its whole history? I don't know. Either way, um, HAL was making Balloon Fight on NES and Nintendo's internal team, SRD, was making the arcade version versus Balloon Fight. Um, oh yeah, that's right, being swallowed by fish is another thing that carried over into Mario. It's definitely part of the series though. You can see it um, in Brawl, there's an ice climber stage that also has balloon fight uh, elements, so you get, um, the f you, if you're uh, swimming in the water for too long, the fish from balloon fight comes up and eats you. It's a nice uh, um, hybrid stage kind of thing, yeah. So, oopsie, yep, the fire can kill you instantly, of course. So the manual kind of explains that, although I'll get into that more when I'm playing Balloon Kid itself, because I don't have a manual for Hello Kitty World, although it would be in Japanese anyway. So I don't know what I'd be able to glean from it. Yeah, easier to stay above the fire if I have a balloon, although I could just jump over it like so. Oopsie. Yeah, uh, cheating. Never mind, you didn't see that. Uh, all that, all that, all that, or oh. okay, yes, all good. Sorry, the um, my microphone seems to be getting in my eye line a bit more than usual. Um, that's what I'm gonna blame it on. Okay. Oh, well, that's just cruel. So the icicles are falling. My platform is also falling. How? Hmm. Yeah, I don't understand how I'm gonna get past this bit because you can't take a balloon with you through that tunnel. And that just kills me. And I can't pump one up fast enough. I guess I'll try making the jump over the whole thing, okay. Yeah, that's the way. Okay. Tricky. Um, yes, so two different teams were making the different uh, versions of Balloon Fight. Yeah. And, you know, they were pretty much developing them separately, although there was a little bit of... Um, collaboration in that the engineers at SRD at one point saw um, Hal's version of the game and <laughs> and they started saying, wait a minute, how do you get the character animation to be so smooth? Like, it's really clunky in our version, but it looks great in yours. And uh, a young Satoru Iwata, who of course was a programming genius um, who performed many amazing feats of game engineering such as fitting the entire Kanto region into Pokemon Gold and Silver. Um, he was the one who had made this innovation and gave them advice about how to achieve it uh, by 
instead of using integer values for uh, uh, like the character um, movement and so on, he had uh, been using decimals and that had not occurred to them. Or something, so, something to that effect. Uh, I'm not a programmer, but that's what I understand from reading the anecdote. That's pretty interesting. Um, and just showing that, yeah, he was a, a great uh, game developer. <laughs> and then um, the engineer at SRD responsible for this little um, event then went to, like, Miyamoto found out about it and he got rebuked by Miyamoto who said, like, why do you have to rely on another company to do these things? Because <laughs> Hal was, like, ahead of them in the game. Yeah, that was interesting. A little inter... In intra-company politics or something. Oopsie. Yeah, this is not a showcase of skill. This is me trying to play two games in two hours. Three, even. <laughs> Basically, all the content in this game is the same as it was in Balloon Kid, except for all the enemy sprites being redrawn. They have the same concepts, but they look cuter in this version and simpler in design. Uh, ex and of course the main characters, Kitty, Mimi, uh, Tippy, were all uh, changed from the characters that were in Balloon Kid. Okay, so I gotta wait for the bucket to get thrown. This is a real King K. Rule situation here. This snowman's gonna throw its bucket hat at me and I'm gonna bop it on the head when it's unprotected. Oops. That can cause damage. Of course. One thing this game doesn't have... Oh, uh, yeah. It, it does have auto-float, kind of. Just not as powerfully as the original Balloon Fire did. That is, if you hold the button down, the character will flap their arms. Uh, automatically, like a turbo. <clears throat> um, yes. So there is a difference between uh, the two um, versions of Balloon Fight. Versus Balloon Fight doesn't actually have the trip mode which I really enjoy the trip mode and that's what that's sort of the basis of what this game was um, designed around the auto scrolling uh, avoid obstacles progress mode instead of uh, a sort of battling mode although that has progress too like as you clear levels you unlock more levels and so on I don't know how many there actually are in fight mode oh just snaked in Ugh. <laughs> Stupid jumping fire. <clears throat> so now the spikes on the ground too. Dang. Yes, so after Balloon Fight, which um, I don't remember what year that was released in, I didn't write it down. Um, of course, Balloon Kid was made as the sequel, and as I said, it was only released uh, in the West at first. Um, ooh, okay, that's instant death. Um, yeah, so the Game Boy game Balloon Kid, it was made by Pax Softnika. Pax Softnika. I don't really know what the origin of that phrase is. Uh, uh, 
but yeah, you might know them for various things. They're not like extremely high profile. Um, in fact, they might be a little like Tose in that they don't like put the developer name up front often. It seems like they assist uh, in development a lot of the time. But um, yeah, I know that they helped make both Mother 1 and Mother 2. Um, they also helped out on Donkey Kong 94 on Game Boy. Um, they made, hang on, I've got it written here. Oh yeah, they helped um, make Mole Mania and Wrecking Crew 98. So a lot of like sort of secondary uh, Nintendo games that are actually really interesting but not the most high profile ones, maybe. Okay, let's try and get the light. Nope, never mind. <laughs> this is the end of the level. Okay. Ugh, forget about it. Um, yeah, they actually shut down in around 2002, 2003, unfortunately, but one of their last games was, um, <laughs> Star Wars Episode One Racer on the Game Boy Color. Oh, here we go. So this apparently is a hat factory. I don't know why we're in a hat factory, but, um, the floor seems to be made of Lego bricks, although if you played Super Mario Land 2 and know this trivia, Nintendo actually had a product that was kind of like Lego construction blocks in their history that they um, produced. And yeah, one of the, I think it must be Macro Land where you're small and you're running around on big things, um, where the level is made of blocks like this uh, in Super Mario Land 2. The six golden coins, good game. Um, I, yeah. It's probably the same reference, maybe? I don't know. We'll see how the blocks look in Balloon Kid when we get there. Yeah, nuts. Oh, these things are nasty. I really like this song, though. It's a cool remix of the main theme. And I do mean remix because the melody's not the same, but... Oops. Yeah, so I think I gotta drop this here and then... Yeah, okay. See, it's that kind of platforming stuff that is unusual and interesting. Because you gotta know when to hold your balloons and know when to drop them. Alright, what's this? Piston. Yeah, so I don't know how they're making hats here, but okay. Whoops. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm pretty impressed with PAX Softnicker. They made a lot of games that I really enjoy a lot. Oopsie. And also Episode 1 Racer. I mean, anyone who had a 64 probably knew about that because uh, for some reason it was really high profile. I mean, you know, Star Wars has always been big and all, um, but yeah, it's sort of a top-down thing. I, I, I rented uh, the Pod Racer game at one point for 64, and you know, it's pretty cool. It's got the whole um, uh, customization mechanic where you get spare parts for your pod and you fit them on, and they give you different stats and stuff. Whoa, hello. Okay. Yeah, so as I get close to those, their sprite starts flickering, and that's because they're loading those other sprites into memory, I guess. Oh, um, okay. Because of my invincibility from my balloon getting popped, I was able to walk on the fire for a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't help me survive, though, did it? I'm better off... Well, maybe I can hop onto... Nope. 
Okay, that's why. Yeah, that's right, given seeing experimentation in platformers at this early stage. I mean, what other games are there like Balloon, Balloon Kid in this era? Um, I don't know, Owl Boy? It's not really the same. That's gonna fall, isn't it? Notes? It's sort of a light bulb holding a spark and then it's just sitting there. More of a hazard. I don't know where there's fire all over the floor. This factory really needs to get its safety practices sorted. Oh, I can sneak through there, but not if the... Not if that's there. Okay, if I do this... That's really tight. Yeah, mashing will give you better results than just holding, but holding will keep you sort of steady. Oops. <laughs> I just gotta sneak under that spark. Uh, okay. Actually, no, I don't need them. I need to get through here. Oh, this is tough. It's getting real tough. Oh, you're kidding. The momentum thing kept bouncing off the wall and falling back into that fire pit. Yeah, the momentum's interesting. It really adds a wrinkle to the platforming, especially when you have the balloons. Like I said, you have to really flap and work at it to go in the other direction. But if you bounce off a wall, you can reverse your direction and keep that momentum in the opposite direction. It's pretty cool. It's interesting, a bit like some zero gravity mechanics that I've noticed in other games, like Super BC Kid or um, Wild Woody. Yes, I'm gonna bring that up on this stream, because why not? <laughs> so this is the hat robot, I guess, who is made of a trash can and <laughs> I don't know, this is weird, but I like it. Ouch. It's like if Oscar the Grouch was a robot and spat electricity out of his face. Yeah, the pod racing was always an exciting scene for a kid, but it's actually pretty boring if you watch it a few times as an adult. I still think that Phantom Menace is the best of the prequels. Yeah, that would have been interesting given... He's, he's suggesting... Um, just as this one takes the concept of balloon fight and expands it into a full adventure, um, having Klukulu Land be expanded into an adventure instead of just single screen challenges. Um, well, I would have said that, um, oh, I guess those fruits are different. I've been skipping this cutscene a lot, but yeah, there you go. There's some content that I missed because I was skipping these. Different, color different types of fruits on the end screen. Um, yeah, Zach agrees with me about the prequels, good. Um, but yeah, Klukulu Land, um, Donkey Kong, King of Swing, and Jungle Climber are basically that, aren't they? Sort of. And they really lean into it with King of Swing. They have Bubbles as a... Bubbles from Klukulu Land, um, who apparently is a fish. Uh, I don't remember if it's a boy or a girl. But, um, yeah, they're a secret character in the multiplayer mode. So that's wearing its influence on its sleeve there. So that was the last level. And it's given me life up. I don't know if there's a new game plus, but okay. I guess I got a final score there and I managed to break 100,000, I think. So this is the ending cutscene. Um. <laughs> yes, technically Rogue One is a prequel. <laughs> Zach says that it is the best Star Wars. Well, it's good. It is good. Um, I wouldn't lump it in with the prequels because that would be unfair on the other prequels. 
Um, oh, right, yeah, singing a Cuckoo Land adventure on the Ness. Yeah, that would have been interesting, but yeah. I love King of Swing and Jungle Climber a lot. They're really great. Wah, wah! Moto kite kure to omote tanda. I am regretting not installing the English patch. This is like the only Japanese text in the game, basically, except the credits. Um, and it's like that one screen at the start that told you how to play. I think he just said, let's go home now. So yeah, there's Mimi, which we didn't see at all during the adventure. But we're all flying home. Very cute. But yeah. It's like... Eventually they decided that they would revive the gameplay concept but put a different IP on it with King of Swing. They sort of did that with Balloon Fight too, um, with Tingle's Balloon Fight on the DS, but although it was a very limited release. I um, actually managed to get a copy of that in Japan last time I was there. Uh, it wasn't like commercially available, you had to get it through Club Nintendo. Oh, Bubbles is a girl, thank you. Um, yeah, Clue Land would be good for the list. There's a lot to talk about there. Um, there's a few different versions of the game that have, like, the original NES release, you know, that's the one that they're going to put on Virtual Console and stuff, but the arcade release and the one that has been on, I don't know, it's Clue Land D in, like, Animal Crossing or something, but it's, like, an expanded version of the game. Anyway, that would, that would all be interesting to talk about, because... Yeah, of the, those things. Um, but, yeah. Bubbles. Yeah, I'll put that on the list. Um, <clears throat> so, yes, things. It's sort of that NES era of Nintendo where they came up with all these concepts. Um, they have some continuation as you go on, but they sort of drop off. So, Clue Clue Land and uh, Balloon Fighter are in that camp, definitely. As well as Mac Rider. Um, um, I don't know. Urban Champion, that hardly even counts at all. Oshimai, that means the end. There's Mr. Mole, Mr. Mouse, and all the friends. Okay, there we go. Yes. Kibben saying versus Kluku Land, the arcade version, which might have been in a similar situation of being co developed at the same time. Uh, got released on home consoles as Kluku Land colon Welcome to Kluku Land and later as Kluku Land D. Um, so there's the original and then Versus, which got released under different titles, he says. Okay. Yeah, that's. I would um, need to cover that in a potential Kluku Land stream. But for now, since we're done with Hello Kitty World, we can move on to the game that it was inspired by and which I would say looks a lot nicer. If I can get my window up, yep. Okay, so we, we're not gonna have a Super Game Boy border for this one. And also this particular emulator has duller colors than the other one I was using, but it's got better controls and other things. It's, it's a real trade-off. But anyway, here's Balloon Kid. So this game that this uh, particular version I'm playing right now is um, a port, sorry, hang on, let me start again. So this version I'm playing now is the Game Boy Color port from Japan, but with a hack patch applied, a mod or whatever you call it, applied to revert um, the text and the title screen to the English version Balloon Kid, which, because like I said before, um, it's called Balloon Fight GB in Japan and um, yeah, stuff. So this is basically retrofitting the English version with the Game Boy Color enhancements, or I guess vice versa. Um, so yeah, we got three modes. The Versus game, um, funnily enough, is not actually in the Balloon Fight mode, like the way that uh, the original Balloon Fight's main mode was. It's more like you're still in an auto scroller. I can't show it off because I don't have two Game Boys linked together, but there's there's videos of it online that you can look up. Um, it is a versus mode, but it's in an auto scrolling uh, kind of level situation. But yeah, the 
as you can see, the original had a balloon trip mode in addition to the adventure mode that Hello Kitty had. So this this thing was cut out of the Hello Kitty version. So this is Alice. Um, she's a protagonist in this game. There's some really cute art of her in the manual. Um, not so much on the uh, box cover, which is uh, a bit, uh, I don't know, it's interesting. Um, <laughs> the manual art is uh, more manga inspired, whereas the uh, box cover is, I guess, more Western cartoon ish, but it's also a bit ugly, I would say. <laughs> but yeah, Alice is a uh, cute little protagonist. Um, and yeah, there's a kind of a recreation of the blue trip mode here. Let's see if I can at least get up to a part with some different kinds of enemies or something. Yeah, a lot of this mode, um, a lot of the challenge comes from uh, the placement of the sparks to create an obstacle course for you. And you've just got to navigate that with the movement mechanics, which can be tricky. Okay, Gibbon says that uh, Bubbles is a puffer fish. And he's saying that, yeah, Clicky Land has had a background influence on series like Zelda and Donkey Kong, but it itself never actually made it past the NES. Yeah, that's right. The um, urchin Unira enemy uh, is uh, claimed to continue into um, Zelda through, I think it's the urchin in Link's Awakening and has the same name um, or something. Or one of the bosses is like a giant. Yeah, they did that a couple of times in the original Zelda. Like Manhandler is supposedly in the manual claim to be a giant piranha plant um, and yeah that's it Dig Dogger one of the Zelda 1 bosses is said to be a giant Unira from Clu Clu Land which I think Unira is possibly just the word for sea urchin I'm not sure oh that's right and the rupees in Zelda they also have the same sprite as um, the collectibles ingots given says um, from Clu Clu Land, Clu -Clu Land reused in Zelda um, so yeah this is um, the original form of Balloon Kid, except not the original form, it's the colorized form. Um, if you, you know, apart from the standard colorizations you could get on Super Game Boy and Game Boy Color uh, by putting a normal Game Boy game into them. It's weird how this version supported Super Game Boy palettes. Actually, what I wanted to do, the manual says um, that you can clear the first two stages without using balloons at all, so we're gonna try and do that um, as a kind of challenge. But yeah, you can see up there the, the bird sprites. Uh, they were the pink birds with the big heads in the Hello Kitty version. Um, but And the, the fire, much more detailed. So all the level layouts and the elements are the same, but um, they were all redrawn in Hello Kitty to be simpler, like I said. So we'll see how different they are here. The cute little fire is a bit scarier in this version. And instead of a strawberry panel to walk into, it's a little Game Boy that you run into to get to the bonus stage. And these pipes look pretty familiar. It's Mario, it's Mario Pipes, yeah. Oh no, actually, sorry, rewind. So don't these pipes look familiar? Uh, yes, they're taken directly from the popular game, Flappy Bird, lol. Flappy Bird, Pipes, yep. Oops, yep, yeah. okay, I'm not gonna be able to get those just by jumping, come on, yes, yes, okay, good. So if you manage to get all the balloons in a bonus level, you get a one-up. And then you get spit out. So we're gonna keep going on foot, and of course you can run faster on foot and you can more easily change direction. So as long as you have uh, stable ground, it's a, it makes you more maneuverable but also there's more threats down here sometimes. I saw on um, the cutting room floor that uh, there's unused sprites in the game. Oh, great. Oh, no, no. Oh, okay. So when it said you could pass through the entire level on foot, 
I don't think it took into account getting an invincibility because you can, as I showed earlier, you can stand on the heads of those birds and jump off them. So I think maybe you could do that to cross that gap, but um, not if you're invincible because you just knock them out. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, unused sprites. Um, there's like a big skull in the data of the game that, as they say on TCRF.net, doesn't really match the tone of the rest of the enemies, so that might be why it was cut. Um, but there's also uh, an eggplant man who appears to run along the ground like some kind of eggplant with arms and legs and a face. So there's another little connection for you between those the, these old uh, Nintendo series that don't get much revivals uh, is Kid Icarus, although that did in fact get a quite substantial revival in Uprising, which is a great game. Um, but for a long time, it was definitely one of those series um, where it had the one game on the NES, it had the sequel on the Game Boy, just like this, um, which also, uh, hang on, pause for one second. These trees have faces. That's pretty Mario-like. Um, but yeah, it had the sequel on the Game Boy, which only came out outside of Japan, just like this. Um, it didn't actually get ported back to the Game Boy Color. Um, but yeah, that series was dead for ages until it got revived by Sakurai and Brawl and subsequently um, Uprising. So yeah, the uh, Balloon Fight GB version of this game gives you the option to save after every stage. I believe you had to play through it all in one go in the original release on Game Boy. But um, yeah, the Nintendo Power service, which w was a thing, if you don't know, it's a thing where you buy a blank cartridge that is rewritable and you can take it into a shop that has like one of these machines and they will um, for a fee much smaller than that of buying a whole new game uh, at retail you can sort of write a game onto your blank cartridge temporarily you know until you overwrite it with something else um, and yeah the, there's a few games that were released that way in Japan. Um, I don't remember any of them off the top of my head. Now, there's a series of Picross games, um, eight volumes of it actually, that were building on uh, Mario's Super Picross and had uh, c character themed puzzles from other Nintendo games, so that was nice. Um, There's a lot of other ones, but I, I can't think of them. Maybe Super Mario USA, but that might have just been um, through the satellite Satellaview service. Anyway, um, yes, cool. I will, yes, so Zach's saying in chat that the Balloon Kid situation seems to be the a weird opposite of the uh, Super Mario Brothers 2 kerfuffle, speaking of that, that I just brought up. Um, see that crocodile was sort of a pinky purple in Hello Kitty and it didn't make that disturbing sound either yeah take that um, yeah so as, as Zach says um, it's a game that was originally only released, only released in the west as a direct follow up to an existing game then turned into a licensed game for release in Japan like Doki Doki Panic was to begin with then the original version got released in Japan on a next-gen console, like uh, Lost Levels on SNES. Not a one-to-one -one likeness, but odd. Yeah, I guess that kind of thing, um, yeah, happened a lot back in this, these days. Oh, hello, Cambodian. Good to see you. Um, coming in from the HG101 Discord, he says, I wonder if balloon fight physics could still be used in a modern indie game or if it's too old school. Um... Well, uh, I always think <laughs> when people are talking about modern indie games, I think of Johann Sebastian Joust, and it's absolutely not anything to do with the original game Joust, but I always think it is, but it's not. So I figured I even mentioned it. But yeah, Joust is well known. I think people have made riffs on it over the years. Um, but... Like I said earlier, um, you weren't here for that, but the physics for the balloon fight flight uh, were reused in Super Mario Brothers for the swimming controls. So any new Super Mario Brothers game kind of still 
carries on those physics in a way. <clears throat> but yeah, as for a whole game that's like that, um, yeah, so by too old school, I think probably you mean the fact that there's a learning curve in the fact that, you know, you have to control your momentum and like work hard to reverse it and just be in control of it at all times. And yeah. Oh, the trees are getting angry. That's interesting. Okay. Um, yes. So. Okay. So we're up to the first boss here. Cambertian. I. Oh, Jim's here. We didn't get to see Tippy Bear in the Hello Kitty version. And the playing area here is much smaller, but it's big enough for what we need to do. We don't need to drop our balloons to land on this guy, we can just jump on him. Oh, by the way, now that we're playing Balloon Kid, I can um, consult the manual. So this particular uh, individual is known as Wacka Wacka Wolf. It says, get by this boss or Jim will always be lost. Yeah, the manual, um, there's a pretty good scan of it on a site called thegaygamer.blogspot.com or whatever, I think it was called. Um, and they, they have a, an accompanying analysis of the manual as well. They, uh, I agree with their points, which is that the two most interesting things about the manual are the nice art that's only on this one page of the uh, character screen, uh, uh, sorry, the character's page. And the other interesting thing is, um, yeah, we've got names here, city, forest, seaside. Yeah, the other interesting thing is the grammatical errors that plague the entire manual. Um, for instance, on this uh, screen, <laughs> yes, no, I didn't mean Jim as anyone we know, I meant Jim is the character, Alice's little brother, that we're trying to get to. He's the one who's leaving behind all these balloons. And instead of Kitty, the blimps in this version of the game say N Fight. And these Birdman enemies look a lot more similar to how they did in Balloon Fight compared to Hello Kitty, unsurprisingly. Although I wonder what that is on the island. It seems to be a statue of a woman, I'm not sure. I kind of thought it was Captain Syrup at first. Although that doesn't really make sense. Um, yes, so grammatical errors all through this manual. Um, on this page alone of um, the anim introducing the enemies, there's two instances of an incorrect uh, apostrophe used for pluralizing, which is not, uh, not right. Um, yeah, we've got different kinds of birds in this stage. <laughs> Gibbon had the same Captain Syrup thought. I wasn't so far off after all. But I'm sure Captain Syrup is never far from his mind. He's a big fan. I need an opportunity to blow up this other balloon. Oh boy. Yeah. I am going to rewind. Sorry for the cheating. And yeah, the, the fish in this version, of course. Oh, I'll try and get down so you can have a good look at it. It's going to pop its head up to show that it's interested and then jump up to try and eat me. Yeah. Let's see if the manual... Um, so, beaky birds and pokey penguins. In the air and on the ground, pokey and beaky will bring you down. So they, they have a nice, like, attempt at rhyming all the enemy descriptions, which is fun. Kinda. Oh, okay, so every time I hit the bumper I get 500 points. Okay. Um, so yeah, we got nice pictures of um, Alice and Jim there. And there's also Sam, who kind of replaces, uh, or I guess was replaced by um, uh, Mimi in uh, Kitty. So Sam is a little boy who is apparently Alice's friend and eternal rival. 
Oh gosh, this looks a bit more gnarly in this version, the inside of the whale. Interesting. The prawns look more prawny too. Oh, and Gibbon is again reminded of Super Mario Land 2. Was there an inside the whale level in that? Wonder how many parallels we can draw to Mario Land 2 in this game. Uh, although Syrup doesn't come in until 3, which is actually Wario Land. I never call it 3. Stop calling it 3. It's not really the same thing at all. Anyway. Um, what else have we got? Yeah, so... Oops. That's a death. Oh yeah, there was a level inside a whale, he says, with bone spikes and stuff. Yeah, I don't remember that, but yeah. Good to know. So we have 14 lives, but I'm going to go for this one anyway. Yeah, gimme. But I'm not going to go up to the bonus level, because I don't care. Yeah, the balloon multiplier is a thing that I remember from Balloon Trip Breeze on the Wii U's Nintendo Land, so I guess that's where it got it from this game. Because if you manage to get an unbroken chain of a bunch of balloons... Oh, yeah, actually it might have been in the original Balloon Trip as well. Yeah, if you manage to keep collecting balloons without missing any, they start multiplying in value. <clears throat> I th I think that might have been in Tingle as well, so it might have in that case been a carryover from, um, yeah, the original. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the description for the crocodile and the walrus enemies was kind of funny. They're called Chow Chow the Alligator and Wonka the Walrus. With a bite like steel, these hungry boys will want you for their meal. Although, when it says hungry boys, it has B-O-Y apostrophe S, which, as I said, it's completely incorrect. Um, but oh well. I noticed that... Oh, what did I notice that in? might have been in Echo. I've been playing Echo Defender of the Future and loving it. Did it have that problem? Mm, I noticed a grammatical error at one point. Oh no, they, they had an extra at C in secrets, so it said secrets, secrets. I don't think they had a, an apostrophe you know, where it shouldn't be. I don't want to blame anyone for that if they're not guilty of it. Punishable by dismemberment. Oh, well, that's a gauntlet. Hmm, yeah, so, I don't know, other balloon fight games. Um, like I said, it's a series that, uh, it's one of those series that didn't get a whole lot of follow-up, but, um, oh, Ice Climber would be a great example of another one, because that also got a Game & Watch game, which has a really different kind of plot and lore, where you're climbing a mountain, and there's no ice, and you're trying to get to a dragon or something? I don't know, it's weird. But yeah, I, I do want to bring up the, um, Game & Watch game of Balloon Fight, which, uh, it's a, it's a riff on the trip mode, not the fight mode, but it, it also, like this game, um, adds yeah a plot and an adventure element to it, which I think makes a, for a much better experience and package, um, as opposed to the completely plotless uh, balloon fight. Okay, that was a weird transition. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, in Game & Watch Balloon Fight, it's got like really nothing to do with um, 
other versions of the game. Um, you're this kind of like space superhero ranger guy um, called, well, he says, I'm a balloon man, uh, double space, the sky patrol. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's again, not great grammar for the Game & Watch manual. But yeah, he's some kind of like sky patrol officer who keeps peace in the sky metropolis. Um, and he's after a boss, the boss of uh, this gang of sky pirates called Oiram Repus, which is uh, very subtle. Uh, it's reading backwards, it's Super Mario. So I don't know what that says about um, Mario that is like, I don't know, this is before Wario, but yeah, reading his name backwards, you get this kind of mutant fish man who is the leader of a gang of sky pirates, so nice concept. Um, he does appear in the game later on apparently, but the idea of the game is that you're floating along and collecting scraps of a map to his hideout that he's torn up and thrown in the air, and you're somehow like cap catching them and reassembling them to find out where he is. So it's kind of weird, but um, yeah, I just like any time when they take that kind of, um, yeah, like I was saying earlier, they take the, the mechanics and the concept of one of these old games that doesn't really have much of a uh, concept of, you know, lore or anything, and yeah, just adding story elements to it that make it more interesting. Um, so yeah, the Balloon Kid does that too, although in kind of a light way. Um, I didn't mention, but the plot in the manual um, for this game starts by saying that, you know, Alice lives in Pennsylvania, spelt P-N-C-I-L, like you might have noticed in the very first stage there were buildings shaped like pencils, so that's where she is, Pennsylvania, good pun. Um, there are also like matchsticks, matchstick buildings and yeah, weird stuff like that. Um, it's been a bit more normal since then, I suppose, since we've went to a forest and now we're just in a stormy sea. Going inside the whale was a nice touch, though. Oh, bugger me. Yeah, that um, rain is going to bring me down. Okay. So, there's the Game & Watch... Um, and Balloon Kid, which, you know, add plot, different kinds of plot, obviously, to the Balloon Fire formula, but like we said earlier, there's times when they will reskin um, an old game like this with another franchise, and they did that with Tingle's Balloon Fight. I actually played that one on stream a long, long time ago. It was one of my very early streams. Um, there's, you know, it, it's all basically endless, or it might not be endless, but there's a lot of levels in there and not like an adventure mode like this game has but um, adding Tingle and um, you can see his tower from Wind Waker in the background it's nice uh, as an aesthetic element um, although I don't suppose it really influences the uh, plot much at all <laughs> for that game it's really an arcade experience still um, in that version, although they've expanded on it. You know, the enemies are the same as they were in Balloon Fight. Um, just updated the look and stuff. You do unlock pictures of Tingle in a gallery. Uh, but um, there's not really a plot. It does have the fight and trip modes, which is nice. And it uses the double screens of the DS to give you a larger play area, which I also really appreciate. There's Wonka Walrus, trying to eat me apparently, which is unusual. I don't think walruses go for large prey like humans very often. I thought they just ate fish, but what do I know? Um, so yeah, another example of them taking another 
uh, IP and attaching it to the series is um, Yoshi Touch and Go. Now it's sort of a half example um, because it's not really like the gameplay of Balloon Fight, but um, the uh, so there's two phases of play in uh, Yoshi Touch and Go. In the first one, Baby Mario is falling down from the sky and he has balloons um, attached to him and you have to get him to the ground uh, safely to land on Yoshi's back. And then there's a phase where Yoshi's running along and dealing with obstacles in front of him. Um, yeah, the initial phase where Mario has the balloons um, there was an early tech demo of the concept to when they were showcasing the DS at like conventions and stuff, trade conventions or whatever. Um, and in that like build of the game, it was called Balloon Trip. But I'm not sure that it's really um, a legitimate installment in the Balloon Fight series, uh, you know. But you know. You can you can mention it at least, which I just did. Uh, yes, I did mention that this studio helped out with DK ninety four Gibbon. He's saying that it certainly shows the art style is very much the same. And now that you mention it, yes, in fact, the sort of squat um, style of the sprites um, really is yeah reminiscent of the enemies and characters in um, DK94 as well, so yeah. Alright, I haven't been in a, any other bonus games, let's see if they change them up over the course of the game. Okay, it looks the same. <laughs> so yeah, Pax Softnicker. Pax Softnicker. Oh, these ones are faster. Okay, so they do change it up by just increasing the speed of the balloons, I guess. In the configuration. Oh, I missed one, so I lose. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> yeah, so that's cool. Oops. All right, and the boss forgot. This is stage six, after all. We're getting numbers for our stages instead of um, in Hello Kitty. It was all symbols. You see, it can't hurt me until it does its attack. That's a nice feature. Friendly accessibility, etc. Come on. Yes. Uh, what else is there? So yeah, there's a couple of um, WarioWare is good at um, representing obscure Nintendo games, especially old ones. So in WarioWare Smooth Moves, there's a balloon trip uh, micro game, which is also expanded into a full mini game. And you can play a mode where you just keep flying forever. It's pretty uh, silly, obviously. Um, you use the Wii remote, you hold it by your side, and you flap your arms like Balloon Fighter does. Um, by the way, you know, people say, oh, you know, Balloon Fighter for Smash or whatever, and do mock ups and stuff. I think Alice would be a much better choice because she's actually a character, unlike Balloon Fighter, who doesn't have a name. Or if anything, go for the Game and Watch guy who has like also a bit more of a backstory and a design. Because Balloon Fighter is basically Mario overalls, uh, a bit skinnier, with a helmet and balloons. Like it's not very interesting. Um, even the ice climbers had more going for them. So yeah, either make it the Sky Patrol guy, or make it Alice. That's what I say. Of course, nobody will care then, because they'll be like, who is this? Um, 
so yeah, I played that um, mini game in Wario West Smooth Moves, and it's pretty fun. Because, of course, like everything in that game, you're doing like silly motions, like an Egypt, and that's part of the fun. But yeah, it's a 3D uh, view, and you're looking down like a corridor and flying along it. There's one for Clue Clue Land actually too that's a similar kind of graphical style. But yeah, that was very much uh, taking the aesthetics of the original uh, NES arcade game and just doing faithful conversions of that to 3D. Oh, these pillars were hiding a bonus stage up there in Kitty. Oh well, I missed it. That's okay, we don't need to see them, they're all the same, I feel. Um, oh yeah, and the, the other WarioWare example was from DIY Showcase, which is something that a lot of people overlook. It was like an accompanying WiiWare app that went with DIY on the DS, and it was a way for you to transfer your games that you'd made and got in uh, DIY to a big screen um, and use the Wii remote pointer and buttons instead of um, yeah, instead of the stylus um, damn alright, let's uh, do this a little smarter hang back when that ledge is in view we Oh. <laughs> when the ledge is there, fly down into it like that. Great. <clears throat> so yeah, um, it has a lot of cool stuff in its uh, DIY showcase. It's got a uh, Donkey Kong Country theme themed micro game. Um, okay, here's the last stage, Factory. I love the world map, I gotta say. Any game... Yeah. Especially after Hello Kitty didn't have one. And you can backtrack for no reason. Um, notice also how the position kind of of the text moves as you go to different locations. That's interesting. Um, yeah, DIY Showcase. It's It's got a lot of the s same sort of content that DIY does, but just like some more of it. Um, but a lot of people overlook it or don't know, don't even know about it. But anyway, it had a um, music player because you can unlock music tracks to listen to in um, yeah in both of them, including remixes of classic Nintendo tracks sometimes. Um, although in Showcase's example, I think the classic tracks were there was like a Mona's Pizza remix. Um, I don't remember what else. There weren't many. Uh, yes. So, yeah, one thing it had was in the music player, you could... It, it was like... You know in Mario Paint, when you're composing music, you get that, like, structure where the screen has, like, music bars that go across the screen and symbols to denote the different sounds. It was kind of like that, except also the background was a balloon trip sort of stage, and you uh, were the balloon fight guy flying along it, and whenever you interact, in, intersect with one of the symbols, um, which are acting kind of like collectibles in the level, uh, it plays the sound, and it can play the song as long as you pass all the symbols. It's weird and interesting. Um, <laughs> oops. No, maybe not the best way to listen to music, but, <laughs> you know, it's a fun novelty, which is what WarioWare's good at, I think. Um, yeah. And then, of course, I mentioned Balloon Trip Breeze on the Wii U, part of Nintendo Land. Um, which again is the balloon trip mode 
but controlled with the stylus so you don't actually control your character but you swipe to cause gusts of wind that blow them around the screen. I think this is harder on this version. There were two fires in Hello Kitty and there's three here now. Interesting. That's my memory. So yeah, I think I've uh, mentioned all the balloon fight slash balloon trip games now. And interesting how some of them take the balloon fight concept and when others take the balloon trip concept. Yep. So yeah, I really like being able to see the whole screen at once in Hello Kitty World, but I think in a lot of other respects the graphics in this game are a lot better and I also like I like how instead of reskinning it with a different thing they they created something that expands on the concept of balloon fight although I guess you know it doesn't really have anything much to do with the original balloon fight or any other uh, installment <laughs> oh I see so if you break the globe it does the lightning effect and a spark comes out. Okay, interesting. Oh, and then that's gonna go around the screen. That's dangerous. <clears throat> so, I don't know. Um, what am I saying? Like, I like Alice, but is it worth getting Alice rather than replacing her with something that already existed? Like, what is the better option? What's the preferable option? Oh. That was tough. Okay. Got it. This level is quite hard. Good thing it's the last one. Oops. Ah, uh, quick. No. Nah. Because, yeah, they've done both of those things throughout the balloon fight uh, history. You've got them inserting Hello Kitty or Yoshi or, well, sort of, um, <laughs> or Tingle. I think anyone that just uses the original aesthetics of the NES game is, you know, both pandering to NES nostalgia, which I never appreciate, um, but it's also not really doing anything to expand on the world of Balloon Fight, whereas at least Game & Watch and uh, Balloon Kid sort of are, but they're also their own thing that's disconnected from anything else. So it's not really like building up a balloon fight world and lore, really. So I don't know. I'm conflicted. Okay, that's it. Woo! In only an hour and a half, I beat both versions of the game. So looks like we rescued Jim. We'll see the final cutscene. Uh, Alice's mischievous younger brother. And then we'll go on to Toby Toby Girl, but yeah, we'll see the credits first. Of course, one of the problems with the whole balloon fight concept is like the physics is all wrong. Helium balloons aren't going to stay floating in the same place in the air. And if one is going to lift you up, then two would just make you uncontrollably fly. Like, is flapping your arms really going to affect your momentum that much? Or how high you are relatively? I don't know. It's all out of whack. And where does she keep the helium canister? She pulls out a little pump when she blows it up. Like, cartoon logic is that if you blow in a balloon, it will float up in the air because it's a balloon and that's what balloons do. But it really depends what gas is in them. Like, helium balloons float because they're lighter than air and they, they displace 
or they are displaced by air. Um, just don't think about it. You notice how some of the pixels on the balloons are actually transparent, so if they pass something, it shows through. The same thing happened with the, the garbage robot thing. <clears throat> Um, yes. So that was Balloon Kid. Um, notice that she's actually carrying Jim, which again, apparently she's not flapping or anything. He's kind of swinging his legs, but what's the buoyancy situation here? Like, she was being carried by two balloons, but now two people are being carried by the same amount of balloons. He had a lot more balloons earlier. It just doesn't make any sense. Like, ugh, anyway. Yeah, so uh, that was Balloon... Oh! Ah, nice twist. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> okay, I love that. Um, yeah, so that's the end. <laughs> Classic. So there was our little mini retrospective on the Balloon Fight series that I talked through. Um, and yeah, Balloon Kid's a really nice game. Like I said, I appreciate how it expands on the formula and... Uh, makes a real adventure and a nice game out of it but that's not all we've got time left in this stream and I was and I wanted to pair up this game with uh, another one that came out much more recently I mentioned it already it's Tobu Tobu Girl let me change the scene over there we go so I'll minimize that and I'll also click this window so now it should be fine <laughs> okay so this is a game that was released just last year, in 2017, but it was developed um, for the actual Game Boy. You could order this game and get it shipped to you on a Game Boy cartridge. Oh, that's what I forgot to do. There was a cutscene if you waited on the title screen. Oh no, I did that in Hello Kitty. Yeah, yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, I, we've, we've seen it all. So yeah, this is a game... Um, it was made by a small group of people. It was just two guys named Simon Jonas Larson and Lucas Erizzo Hansen. I forgive the pronunciation. Um, sounds Scandinavian or something. But um, yeah, this was developed with the original Game Boy in mind. You could get it printed on an actual cartridge. And because of yeah my emulator, I can cycle through all the actual palettes we could have had on a Game Boy Color. So I think I'm gonna go with this one. Yes, this one. This is pretty much my standard for playing Game Boy games in this way. So yeah, the plot is that the girl, who is unnamed in the manual, also the manual for this game they made, and it looks really nice. It's got nice illustrations, um, so check that out. You can get the game for free. Um, oh yeah, the girl is walking her cat, which has a balloon, and then it floats, who cares? Like that, <laughs> you saw all there is to the plot of this game. There's not much more in the <laughs> in the manual. So yeah, it's a it's like a homebrew game, and it's really cute. So it kind of went together with uh, Balloon Kid because it's about a cute little girl who is able to fly through the air somehow. So in in the case of Tobu Tobu Girl. You don't um, have balloons, but you can bounce off enemies or animals in the environment. To, yeah, get higher. And um, that's relevant to the name because. Oopsie. Tobu is a Japanese word meaning to jump. Um, well, I think it can also mean to fly. I'm not really sure, but um, I've certainly heard it in a jump context. So we have a boost button and um, we can tap it to sort of hover, or we can hold it down to gain a lot of height quickly. But the meter on the bottom right there will deplete and I don't seem to have any way to fill it up. Whoops. Yeah, there's also a dash. So we've got A and B. Um, there's, yeah, the, the controls have some nuance to them, and it's a matter of mastering them. <laughs> yes, yes, Zach, of course. 
I should have played all these games that are about getting high three days ago. Yeah, that only works in the uh, weird, incorrect American way of representing dates. Yeah. Days should go before months. Unless you're doing year, month, day. Which is actually the best. Oops. Huh. Okay, so I can't bounce on that. That's just a hazard. Yeah, year, month, day is good for um, sorting things on a computer file system. Yes, this game is adorable. I think given you're the one who told me about it in the first place. Um, and it's, it's perfect. It looks like it could have been made at the time. The music is probably better than what you would get for anything at the time, maybe. Um, yeah, so the boost, you have to, if you're falling, you have to use it to reverse your momentum before you can start going up. So there's all these tricky control things. Uh, there's only four levels which I read and I was like, okay, that'll be short, but they're actually pretty tricky to do, so I'll see if I get through them. Um, I guess I'll keep going until the two hour mark unless I finish the game before then. But yeah, I'm glad I got uh, Hello Kitty Wild and Balloon Kid out of the way in a short amount of time. Whoopsie. Yeah, I ran out of boost. Oh, it might not have been you. Gibbons unsure about that now. <laughs> it's called Tobu Tobu Girl. Oops. He says it looks familiar, but he's uncertain that he told me about it. <laughs> so I don't know what the... Oh, I see. Okay. So I can do up to three air dashes, which is why I, what that symbol above my character's head represents, until I bounce on another enemy. Or, I mean, they're not really enemies. They do hurt you if you hit them from below, I guess. But they're not really an antagonistic force. Even in Balloon Kid, I don't know how hostile a lot of those enemies were. Although, actually, oh, that's cute. Yeah, I'll turn that off, I don't need it. Um, there was some nuance here. I don't know, I can't find it, but... Um, oops. Yeah, in Balloon Kid, there was a thing about how some enemies, you can just bounce off them, but some are really out to get you, or whatever. I don't remember, so whatever. Yeah, so it looks like boost is just a way to, like, save you if you miss a jump or something. Although I might need it to get past the spiky doozits. I really was sure it was you, because, like, you know, it was released, it was a new game released on Game Boy, you could order a cartridge, I don't know, Gibbon doesn't seem to know what I'm talking about, so that's alright. Oh, oh boy, how do I get up now? I'm so close, but I've run out of boosts. I'm going to real quick consult the manual, which I have open somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It does sound like the sort of thing you'd go for, absolutely. Like a repro cart of a new game that was made for an old system. Um, yeah, A is just for dashing. Oh, you can dash upwards. Ah, uh, okay. Great. Uh, there's some good palettes here. In the manual, it's all the green palette. Um, that's a very cute pause screen, too. Let's see what else we can do. Oh, well, that's kind of garish. Uh, that's not bad. Um, oh, I like that one. Oh, well, I went past it already. Yeah. Oh, no, that's ugly. That's way too off. So that's what I had it on. Yeah, let's try this. Oh, no, then the character's sprites are the same color as the background. That's not good. That one, that's good. We'll, we'll try this one for a bit. Um, but yes, uh, I was wasting time. Yeah. Um, 
Um, yep, so you can get this game on its website. Uh, just Google Toby Toby Girl, I guess. Um, it's a pay what you want kind of deal, so they can they will let you have it for free, but you can also, yeah, you know, like Bandcamp or all those things. You can choose to uh, give them some money if you want. Or you can order an actual physical thing. At least I think so. I didn't really check that too uh, strenuously, so maybe you can't, but I believe that was the idea, was that it would be playable on actual hardware because that's how they designed it. Whoa. Whoa! Yeah, it's tricky. It looks so cute, but um, some of these moves can be pretty demanding. It's certainly not incredibly easy, but it's also easy to pick up and, yeah, restarts you quickly and all that. I like that. I think I'll pretty much only dash up most of the time. Dang. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I rewind. This is certainly an arcade-y kind of experience, but I want to see the rest of the levels. Yeah, so you get up to a portal at the top. For so some reason there's a portal, never mind why. Oh, that's cute. Oh, rank C. Oh well. Yeah, you have to get a better rank. Um, in the manual it says, like, it's not just time. So yeah, you unlock new levels and then just get better scores on them. And there's four in total, so we're gonna try and see if we can get to all of them. Hmm? Oh, oh um... No? Okay. Same kind of enemies here. Bats and birds. Notice there's a new music track and... Oh, there's different kinds of enemies now. Okay. So these are aliens. We're getting high up, high up enough now that we're starting to see aliens entering Earth's atmosphere. Assuming this is Earth. Whoa. Oh yeah, you can do diagonal dashes. Interesting. Like I said, a lot of nuance in the controls. But yeah, our character is just a girl who is good at jumping, I guess. Oops. <laughs> yeah, so... Like I said, this is made with just the capabilities of the Game Boy in mind, but I would have loved to see what kind of Super Game Boy borders they could have made for this game. They, it doesn't have support for them, but considering how nice the art is in the manual, um, I think that could have been really cool. You sort of see some of it on the end screen there, like a more pixelized version of uh, yeah, what the character looks like in that art style. But the in-game art style is really cute too. Much like Balloon Kid, we have the really squat little sprite. Um, oops. Yeah, very reminiscent of the same kind of art style. Not, not exactly the same, but... Oops. I think the music is continuing after my death, which I appreciate, especially in a game like this um, where you're going to die a lot. Nothing's worse than hearing the start of the same music loop over and over again, which is a problem in uh, like RPGs as well. You get the overworld music for a few seconds and then a random battle starts up and you hear the start of the 
battle music again. Okay, so you don't bounce as high off aliens because they're blobby and they absorb your momentum, I guess. Yeah, let's see, I'm, as I'm continuing, I'm starting to quote unquote master how to move a bit better. Ah, until I do things like that. Yeah, so it's one this game is one of those two person team situations where one person does the art and one does the programming. Um, of course, much like a lot of those situations, the music is outsourced to a third person as well, <laughs> who's not quote unquote part of the team, but um, yeah. I didn't write down the name of the music person, so hopefully we can get to a credit screen that'll say, but um, yeah, very nice music to go with the visuals. And this is the kind of modern indie game <laughs> mechanics that you probably wouldn't have seen back in the day, but it still seems so right on the Game Boy system. Mm. Just to follow on from what Cam was saying earlier. Would balloon flight work in a, as a modern indie game? When I think about games like this that are made these days, I think about uh, Downwell or um, come on, brain, give me a second example so it's not a really stupid sentence. Uh, nope, never mind. <laughs> yeah. see my previous record on the right side of the screen there. I've only managed to get halfway up so far. Whew. But I'm losing focus. Doesn't help that it's getting hotter in here. Summer was supposed to be over. It was so autumn. It was rainy and cool. But then back up to 28 today. It's insane. Nah. Yeah, this was definitely the right game to warm up to. Because Balloon Kid was fairly easy and friendly. This one's a little bit more uh, hardcore. <laughs> start using emulator tricks before long because I want to see you know the resolution of this gripping plot is the girl gonna get her cat back I mean the addition of aliens is fun because then you're like oh weird so what other things can we look forward to popping up in this game now and this is only level two oops too clever because we've also got the timer up there of course. Spiky propellers. Uh oh, that's my time running out. So close. 
Yes. We cheated our way to the top. <laughs> nice. Sitting on alien. Oh, stomps, of course. I forgot all about that gameplay mechanic. Dang. Stomps give you more points too. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll show up a stomp in the next level. <laughs> hey. Space. Oh right, I was in the high score mode, that's why I was getting confused. You don't select a level from that screen, that just shows you your scores. Okay, so this is a stomp. You dash downwards and it kills the enemy below you. But your jump doesn't get any higher out of it, so... It's really just something to do if you're going for points. And it removes your safety nets, of course. So I'm not going for points, so I don't really mind so much, but... I'll just show it off. I actually thought it would give me more height, which is why I was concerned about forgetting about it, but it doesn't. <laughs> Get more height by dashing upwards, which is fine. I'm going to continue to do that because eh, I'm not so into playing games for scores. I like seeing what they have, what content they have, um, playing through a story, that kind of thing. That's just what kind of gamer I am. And when you want to see what music is coming up next, too. It's a good motivator to keep going. You can probably download the soundtrack of this game separately, too. I didn't uh, check that either, but I'm going to assume you can. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, let's just boost a bit. Ah, ghosts. Now they're going to disappear automatically when you stomp on them. I think that's the last kind of uh, enemy character in this game. Yeah, you got the propellers, you got the aliens, and then the ghosts. It's all in the manual. Pretty sure there's not a final boss, but um, we'll see. Oh, I'm gonna need to find more time pickups. There's one. <laughs> okay then. Good. Yeah, the other thing about rewinding is it will interrupt the music. Unfortunate. What just happened? Did I run out of time, maybe? <laughs> Alright, let's just be a bit smarter about this. Ghosts have a slightly different movement pattern to birds and bats. They bob back and forward. Good. I feel like in this level you really do need to get every time power up so you don't run out. Too intense. Yeah, and out of time. Wow, this one's really tough.
Oops. Yes! Oh. <laughs> oh, that was the last level. I wonder it's so hard. I thought I had one to go. <sighs> Ending screen. Oh! That's pretty similar to the, the Link Kid ending. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for playing. So yeah, if you're into high score chasing and really mastering a tricky set of mechanics, this game is fantastic. And it's so adorable. Um, ooh. Okay, so this is how it's quote unquote meant to be played, I suppose. Monochrome mode. <sighs> yeah, that was super intense that last bit. I'm all drained. But yeah, that's that's that. Um, no credits. Maybe on the option screen or something. I'll have a look. C rank. Oh no, there is another level. I forgot. I knew there was four. It just ramps up the difficulty so quickly. <laughs> yeah, didn't do well on the score with that one. Um... Okay, we're gonna give this a go. Dream. Go back to a nice dream palette. That one. The pastel pinks, yellows, and blues. Oh, intense music. might not be one that I complete. <laughs> you might want to look at someone more competent playing this game to really see what happens after this. But I feel like we got a satisfying ending there with the girl and her cat, so that's nice. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Man, air dashing is a cool mechanic. Hmm, air dashing in games. Mega Man X, some of them. Um, what's that one? Can't, I can't think and play this at the same time. I can't even talk and play this. Barely. also going to be really tight on this one. Not even halfway. Oh, there's the Trixie Ghosts.
Yeah, I'm out of time. There's no way I'm doing I'm doing this level. <laughs> oh, but I've had a lot of fun with this game. Um, it's yeah, it's a beautiful game. Um, and really difficult. Okay, so intro tunnel. Yeah, got all the different tracks there to listen to, and a very cute screen with a cat. Gotta love that. And scores mode. So I don't, I, I don't think I can look at um any credits there, but just to give proper credit, I will. Yeah, tangrangamesdk slash tobu girl tobu tobu girl. Um. Yep, yeah, it's released in ROM form and physical release. Comes in a box with a nice manual, and you can download the soundtrack right from the page. Uh, it's all itchio and stuff. So the manual is here, and it tells me that, well, yes, so the music and sound effects were done by a Potato Tan, so there you go, Potato Tan. Yeah, so that might be it. Um, that's all for today. Thanks for joining me. Um, it's been a lot of fun, and I hope you had fun too. So, yes. Oh, did I mention that I'm not doing streams for the next two weeks? Yeah, work commitments and stuff. Scheduling is all terrible. So, this will be the last one for a little while. I could do one in, like, the later evening, but then all the Americans will be asleep. I could do one on the weekend, but then, you know, timing is awkward with that as well. Um, so, I'm either I might do one on a weekend sometimes, or I might just give it a rest for two weeks so you won't have to listen to my voice for a little while um yeah i'll probably post that on twitter as well but anyway that's it for today thank you very much for joining me and check out balloon kid uh with patches and toby toby girl so until next time whenever that is see ya